vita. Thank you for joining us on Issues and Answers today here on NTN, the National Television Network. And we are here with the Minister for Commerce, Business Development, Manufacturing and um, Consumer Affairs, as well as cooperatives, the Honorable Emma Hippolyte, as well as the President of the St. Lucia Consumers Association, Dr. Tecla. It's Luis. We are going to discuss the, issue, the proposed increase in, in the price of, of bread. And I, should I say bakery products, whatever, anyway, but let's, let's leave it at bread. So we will begin with Minister Hippolyte. Hippolyte. Um, first of all, we understand that bread being a staple of, well, yes, bread being a staple, not only in St. Lucia, but around the world. Mm -hmm. um, what is the motivation for, for that decision? You mean the decision for the increase? Yes. OK, it's not, <laughs> it's not a motivation. What I need to, in, first let me thank you for, for having me and for having Dr. Lewis on the program. I think it's extremely important that St. Lucians understand um, where we are and what we are doing. Um, we are part of a, a, of a world where inflation Mm -hmm. and cost of food items and all items have gone up. Um, that was influenced by first COVID-19 and secondly by the war in, U in Ukraine and Russia. Mm -hmm. So it impacts us that way. Now, more specific to the question you have is why, are we, why has government awarded an increase yeah. to the bakers for the price of controlled bread? That has been important and um, necessary because... And, and you have to explain control yeah. bread because most control people see that bread, just we bread have generally. The Creole bread, what we, the Creole bread that you now pay 35 cents for, mm. um, we propose an increase, an increase to 45 cents from January. Mm. And the two pan loaves, we have the small pan loaf that used to be $3.60, mm. is going to be $4.35 in January. And the large pan loaf was $5.40, will now increase to $6.50 in January. So what has caused that increase? As I was saying, the bakers last got an increase in the price of bread in 2008. And that is about 14 years ago. And all of us know that for 14 years, the price, not only the price of flour, but the price of electricity, the price of water, the other ingredients, the labor costs, everything mm -hmm. else has increased. Mm -hmm. So it is extremely important that we be fair to the bakers as well. Right. Because when people go into business, they go into business to make a profit. And I want to thank, take this moment to thank the bakers. They have been negotiating with my ministry and the government for a little while now. And we felt that it was, a, we had reached a point where we needed to give them an increase. But during that time, what has happened, um, and I have reported several times to the public, that the government continue to subsidize flour. Okay, we'll talk subsidization yes, in, in a, a while. while. But let us, let's go to Dr. Lewis, um, your association. Perhaps you can just tell us a little bit about your association as it relates to the, not just so much the increase, but the consumers in St. Lucia. Thank you, Mr. Gasper. I, I also thank you for inviting me here for the discourse with yourself and um, Honorable Hippolyte on the discussion this morning. The National Consumer Association was set up to ensure that consumers are not unfed in the purchase of items, goods, and services. Um, we work collab collaboratively with the Ministry of Consumer Affairs, mm. specifically the Consumer Affairs um, Division, to ensure that consumers are not unfair. 
And um, when we heard of the increase or the proposed increase for Creole bread and space or the controlled bread items, we did not have an issue with it because we knew for years now that the Baker's Association had been advocating for the increase in the price of bread. Another issue that we found fitting that the government cannot continue to subsidize flour. We understand um, through the Ministry of Consumer Affairs that the subsidy on flour cost the government $5 million. And the $5 million was from June, July this year, to December, to this month. Um, our interest in the proposed increase is that the bakers increase it according to the date issued by the government, and that's from the 1st of January. Mm -hmm. So, 2023. Mm -hmm. So, we are very mindful, and we want consumers to be very mindful that the increase does not take effect before the agreed time. But as, an, as a consumer association, we do not have an issue with the increase because the last I can remember that we paid an increase in bread mm. was 2004. And mm. we're talking about 2008. Mm. And we're talking about 14 years ago. Yes, so the yes. increase is timely. Um, the increase is conscionable. From a 45 cents Creole bread, you're only going to pay 45 cents. So that's a 10 cent increase. For the small pan loaf, it's only 70 cents increase. And for the big pan loaf, it's a dollar and 10 um, cents increase. Mm -hmm. um, again, I have seen the exponential increases in bread that is not controlled, like multigrain bread and bran, bran um, flour <laughs> bread. Mm -hmm. um, of course, highly flavored bread. <laughs> a highly flavored bread. As a consumer, when you understand the issues that have brought about the increase, first, COVID 19, and more recently and worse, the war in Russia, yeah. the war between Russia and U Ukraine, we do understand the rationale. But yeah. our business as <coughs> the Consumer Association is to ensure, one, the bread is not increased before the agreed time, and two, that the bakers produce quality bread or persons who just drive around with their vans on a hustle mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. give the quality mm -hmm. that they deserve. So if a, a Creole bread should be three ounces, don't give two and a half ounces or two ounces because mm -hmm. you're on a hustle. Yeah. Give three ounces. Yes, and it's on the issue of quality, before we talk subsidization, Minister, that I, I want to emphasize the issue of quality, quality because a lot of the times, and I've heard the complaints myself, that um, whatever the ingredients that they put in the bread is not sufficient or whatever, whatever the, it is, how does the ministry maintain that quality or monitor well, you know, we have inspectors assigned to the ministry through the Consumer Affairs Department. Mm. Um, so they definitely have the responsibility to scout um, the various bakeries to know first the wheat and, and the supermarkets because some of the bakeries... Do bakers get a license before they operate? Yes. So all bakers? Yeah, I'm not sure if it's all because, you know, mm. persons open bakery in all parts of the various communities mm. so I am not certain to say that every person who has a bakery has a license because what we are trying to do uh, um, with the help of the association is to try to get all the members all bakers together um, especially now I think we have increased the database especially now that they have to buy the flour and at a subsidized rate right. we start getting information as to where they are um, so maybe that's one of the areas we'll have to work with the Bakers Association on how we improve the quality, the training for the for the members. Mm -hmm. I know the larger bakeries are focused on that because at the various meetings that we've had, they do talk about the quality of the the bakers that they have to employ, the, the workers that they have to employ. Mm -hmm. So I know it is an, uh, uh, an issue for them. Yeah. And we've had conversation about whether there is room um, to train young persons, more persons mm. in the art of baking and so on. So it's mm. an, an area that requires um, a bit of work between our government, the Ministry of Health, the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, and the association to see the training that is required. And maybe TVET or one of those right. um, groups. 
Okay, now let's talk subsidization. How mm. much does the government subsidize um, bread? Oh, it's. Um, I was given the figures. The, the figure I have here from July to, to December, we subsidize flour to about half, um, half, um, $5 million. Per annum? That's, that's, that's this time around. Um, Six months. So what we, I, what I don't have is the comparative figure. So I don't want to oh, say per okay. annum, okay. because before that there was subsidy, but the price of flour was a lot less. The bag of flour from the last contract we had, the previous contract was ninety nine dollars, mm. and we should sell to the bakers at fifty dollars. In June, for example, um, after negotiations, we sold to the bakers at thirty five dollars because we knew things were difficult. Right. So Baker's got flour for the month of June at $35. Mm -hmm. From July, the bag of flour rose to $144. Wow. 144 And during that period, we sold to the bakers at $50. $50. So government was, was paying on $84 on every bag of flour. Government was subsidizing. So that is why you have this high tax. Something of like nearly 70 percent. Yeah, five mm -hmm. million dollars. So we had to do that to contain the cost of flour. Mm. So we have negotiated. I believe we have negotiated a new rate with them coming um, January, mm -hmm. and that is why we have said government is still subsidizing it, but mm -hmm. at a at a less extent. Mm -hmm. um, but that is why we we had to to try to strike a balance to see government will continue some, some level of subsidy, mm -hmm. but the bakers also needed an increase so that um, to protect the viability of their businesses because the issue was if they did not get an increase, some of them would be closing down. But let me ask you this. Um, is CARICOM taking a, a collective approach to, say, and purchase of flour because we don't produce that in the Caribbean. The wheat doesn't come from us. I don't know. We don't have a collective approach in terms of purchasing. I know, for example, in the, in the OECS, we purchase flour from St. Vincent. And also we have our own Caribbean grain mm -hmm. that's producing flour up in Beaufort. Mm -hmm. So we have at least, at least two suppliers. At one time, I think we used to also get some items from Grenada. Mm. So, but we do not have a Caribbean approach to the purchase yeah. because you see, because it's different companies, oh. it's private sector, so they yeah. would have to be coming together on their own, especially mm -hmm. if they're importing the the wheat mm -hmm. because they're producing the flour, but they have to import the wheat. I say so because I know that they're in in the purchase of how you, how you pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. the OECS has yes. that kind of collecting. Yeah. You know. But yes, if the OECS, you're right, we have that arrangement where we, col we, we purchase and then the different governments, we, so they, we benefit from the, 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 the fact the, that we are purchasing the mass, mass, um, mass purchase. Mass purchase. Yeah. All right. Um, mass have um, associates. Uh, me, I'm you, skipping into, into, yeah, too, into my career. You, you, you have um, too many hats, Mr. Gaston. You know, too many hats, too many hats. But um, um, President Louis, first, nice title, eh? President Louis. <laughs> president <laughs> Louis, <laughs> as, as president of the Consumer Association. Um, w is there any, any what is the, the kind of education that, that the, the, consumer, the Consumer Association is probably considering in, in light of, of those kinds of developments. Okay, the Consumer Association, every two months, we have a general meeting with our mm. members. And what we do is bring in a speaker, um, a guest speaker who would speak on different issues mm. that affect consumers. So at our next general meeting in January, we will bring in a, uh, an invited guest from the Baker's Association mm -hmm. and also from the Consumer Affairs Division to have discourse on issues like increasing bread. Not mm -hmm. that they have a problem, but they said education is power. Yes. So if we educate our members and they understand 
those who have the information can share it with those that are less informed because that's how information spreads mm -hmm. so we do have those discourse every two months where we any issue that will affect consumers or at least the members within the association we would bring in a guest speaker to speak on it beautiful well we'll take a break right now uh, we will return in a moment as we continue to discuss the issue of the increase the proposed increase in the price of bread which should take effect in January 2023. We'll be right back. Pamela, I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. Welcome to Issues and Answers one more time. Uh, we're discussing the proposed increase in, in the price of bread. Come january 2023 and i'm here with the honorable minister for commerce the honorable emma hippolyte as well as the president of the saint lucia consumers association dr thekla fitz lewis who are assisting in that discussion and and really enlightening saint lucia on all of the aspects of of bread and, and the increase and all of, of the things that we need to know what we can probably focus at this time is, let us look at the, the, the we, we spoke quality a while ago, the quality of bread, and, but we have not spoken enough about how well is that quality going to be monitored. Um, who wants to take it? <laughs> Minister? Well, you know, we have, within the Ministry of Commerce, we have um, our St. Lucia Bureau of Standards and they are responsible for setting standards uh, for mm -hmm. the country. So they have a role to play in terms of monitoring. But our foot soldier on the ground are our inspectors from the Consumer Affairs Department. And they, would have, they have the responsibility to visit not only the, the bakeries, but also the supermarkets to look at the bread that's there to ensure that we have the right weight. Because for example, there is a weight. For example, the, the, the Creole bread is supposed to have three ounces. So periodically they should be weighing that to ensure that the consumer is actually getting the three ounces. So it is a, a, a big issue for us, especially now with, with the price increases and so on. We've spoken to the association and we we're hoping that persons would comply, the bakers would, would ensure that they give the consumer the right weight mm -hmm. and a good quality of bread. Right. A good quality. Mm -hmm. And I must maybe use that moment to say that my bakers, what I've seen in Sufra, we have some good quality bread. <laughs> <laughs> As a plug for Sufra. <laughs> so I want to. You know, when you go into some of the supermarkets and cashews, you have some good quality bread. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, not only Sufre, I remember going through um, a little shop where by Ravino. You have good mm -hmm. quality bread, good quality bread. Mm. You know. Inviting us to inviting go down. Inviting us to, to go down. <laughs> you have the, 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 the lady with the, on the highway in Beaufort. Uh, you had good quality bread. Oh, yeah. And yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, in yeah. Um, Sufre, it says good quality bread. Yeah, and well, good quality all over St. Lucia. Yes, in fact, but you it, say it, um, the, the place that um, in the valley comes that, to mind. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, the people make a lot of, a lot, a lot of bread. Yeah. Sure. But I, I am still concerned about the quality and the monitoring because there are so many fly by night 
bakers who just come well, up and yeah, yeah. you spoke of those monitoring in the in the supermarkets. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about those people on the vans every night, pom, 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 all over the place. Yes, this is, How this do is we a new, it's, it's, it's new, but and I think it all came about as well, I think, or intensified during COVID. Persons are looking at oh, ways yes. to start the business, and some of them started making bread. Mm -hmm. But I know within the, from basically um, anybody working in a bakery supposed to have a health Health, health card. card. Yes. So you start from there. Mm -hmm. You have to. You have to. The workers need to visit the doctor. They need to get a health card. Mm -hmm. And within the various communities, I know that the Ministry of Health has an uh, what you call a, a department for the environment and environmental. Yes. And those persons are supposed to be also going around and mm -hmm. seeing that these places are uh, clean, clean mm -hmm. with the proper hygiene and everything. Yes. So, but what I think is required based on our conversation is maybe a little sit down with the Ministry of Health, Consumers Association, the Ministry of Commerce, mm -hmm. the Bakers Association, and to see how best, and the Bureau of Standards, see the protocol, see the standards, and see how best mm -hmm. um, that the bakers comply with that. Mm -hmm. From the association standpoint, um, yes, I support mm. um, what Minister Hippolyte said. It is important that there are gatekeepers to these new spring out businesses. I, I personally do not have a problem with persons on the hustle. As the Minister said, a lot of these little industries, the little van bread industries started during COVID. It's a good initiative. In some areas, it supports small communities mm -hmm. by bringing bread to persons' doorsteps. But there have to be a monitoring. What quality bread do we get? Mm -hmm. Where do those persons bake the bread? Do they break the, their bread somewhere that is aesthetic? These are very important conversations to have, and I believe there need to be some dialogue with the environmental health departments. Do, we all know of, of these little van, van bread bakers. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Is the association, is the Baker's Association aware that they exist? Because they are competitors as well. Um, does the Environmental Health Division do any monitoring to ensure mm, that yeah. they have health cards yeah. and the places? As consumers, we want to know these questions. Um, another thing, some consumers are complaining about buying bread that had like rock by the next day. You buy a bread today, Monday morning, and by tomorrow morning, you cannot give it to your child. Mm. It is so hard, you cannot bite it. What ingredients do they use? Do they follow the normal bread making protocol? I mean, now, yes, they all need training. But the greatest university is Google, is YouTube. Do persons <laughs> use these mediums to at least better their skills mm. if they are unable to go to NSDC or the TVET training, which is available all over St. Lucia? And I find now under the new administration, TVET is more accessible to everybody and all and sundry yeah. and they have gone the extra mile in ensuring that different sectors that tvet never had any cvq or nvq for mm. is now available so as consumers we want to ensure that these things happen um, that these bread makers really make bread under aesthetic conditions and they give you value for money so if the government is going to say okay we will allow you to sell your bread at 45 cents your creole bread but you need to give three ounces. Do not give us two ounces. Yeah. Give us three. And mm. ensure that the bread is something that we can use. But we also want to encourage our consumers that they too can find subsidies for bread. Go back to porridge making. As a child, I grew up mainly eating porridge. Bread was not a staple every day for breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so my parents would grate plantain and make plantain porridge, sweet potato, cassava, they were very creative. We have to get creative, eat what we grow and grow what we eat. Because mm -hmm. there are some persons for them, raising the bread from 45 cents to 45 cents, that's cheap. They could have raised it higher. Mm -hmm. For some persons, they see it as a strain. 10 cents on every bread, if they have to buy 10 bread for a family, is a dollar. Mm -hmm. But they too have to get creative. Mm -hmm. buy, you, you buy a, a, a packet of flour in the supermarket for $2 and something cents, make rose bakes, make bakes. 
find ways to subsidize. Mm -hmm. You know, you can make zucchini bread, banana bread. Zucchini bread. Yes, Tell me about it. I mean, a lot of people grow zucchini. A lot of people have bananas around their home. We have to start getting creative with what we have. Mm -hmm. Most times we do not get creative and we purchase things and complain about mm -hmm. the price of goods. Mm -hmm. So we have to start that creativity in St. Lucia. I mean, COVID has taught us a lot of lessons. So, Minister, I know the Prime Minister has made that, that very call. Do you want to add to that? Yes. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, there's no doubt about that. Huh? I could, you know, um, you know, some persons have challenges, especially persons who are diabetic, have mm -hmm. actual challenges um, consuming bread all the time. So you need alternatives. And we need to guide them on the alternatives. For example, if I have to, when I'm in Sufre, it's easier for me in Sufre than at home in Caspies um, in terms of what I consume. When I'm at home in Sufre, I have a friend, so I have my one pot very early in the morning when I leave at eight or nine, so then mm. I can skip my lunch. You know, it's, it's, it's mm. and the one pot is really my, oh, my yeah. green fig and, and my fish. <laughs> so when I move with that, I can mm. move for the day. Nourished. Uh, nourished. For the entire day. For the entire mm. day, you know, you have to <laughs> take, you, you know, because you cannot stop. Mm. But if you do not have the time, that is where the bread comes in. True. The fastest yeah. thing is the fastest thing to, to, to pull. So you have to plan it. You need to mm. ensure that we have the health in focus. We need to ensure, especially where we have kids, we need to change the taste buds. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need to change the taste buds. So we need to focus on what we're having in the home, what you're having in the school, what mm -hmm. you're having in the lunch kit. So it's a lot of work mm -hmm. to be done. Mm -hmm. Ministry of Health, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Commerce, we must mm -hmm. come together. Mm -hmm. and Parent Teachers Association, the um, nutritionists in the schools, we mm -hmm. need to come together to speak as a country as to how we remain healthy and the whole issue of food security. We need to put it on the table and have a serious conversation. Yeah, and in fact, I, 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 th I thought I was just crossing my mind while you were speaking, was the, you having the portfolio of business development yes and then and, and, and in line with what um, dr lewis said about doing those creative things mm -hmm. that can be a nice business yeah. a local business for for a lot of our people so for example we've had training into the young ladies how to do nakabu flour potato flour we are now training yeah. more and more mm -hmm. um, we, but in order for them to have that as an industry then you have more growing, you have to, to plant more macabre. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So you need to speak about agriculture. You need yes, to, so yes, we need to yes. be together. We, yeah. yeah. Well, any final words? We have come to the end of it. Well, uh, again, I want to take the moment to thank the Baker's Association um, for the patience and for working with government um, thus far. I want to thank the consul and congratulate Dr. Lewis as a new president and to encourage persons to join the Consumers Association because you need to have a voice. Um, I want to do that and I want to take this moment to thank, um, to wish, to thank my staff as well at the Ministry and the various um, agencies, St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, Export St. Lucia, um, the Free Zone in Viewfort, the Ministry of Commerce, all the departments, to thank them for their support uh, during the year to thank them for the service because right now there for example our small business unit is all out on the ground bringing government closer mm. to the people so I want to really thank them for the sacrifice and for the passion that they have displayed and I want to take this moment to wish everybody Merry okay. Christmas Happy New Year and stay safe. Ten seconds for you. Yes, I would like to thank you, Mr. Gasper and Honorable Hippolyte, for the opportunity to be here representing the consumers. I would like to encourage the general public to join the Consumers Association with an increased membership. We have a stronger voice in ensuring that our stakeholders produce better quality and sell us goods and services that are applicable and very important for our well-being. Have a Merry Christmas and a joyous New Year. Thank you very much, ladies, Honorable Minister, and President 
Lewis, <laughs> I'll call you by that name deliberately, um, for a very interesting discussion. I think we are a lot more enlightened now. St. Lucia, thank you so much, and um, we do take the opportunity to wish you all the best for the season and do hope that you will stay safe and use all the knowledge and information that you've gathered in this program to make your families, yourself, your home, and St. Lucia a much better place. Thank you. Goodbye.